Idea number one, let context drive. So this is the first exercise that we did. This is a poster, like a series of posters I had designed for a bunch of talks at MCAD five years ago. Um, and this kind of shows them in context. And these are actually cropped in because when I took them, I was documenting them. So I was putting these up and they look really nice. They're like they're very clean and contrasty, but at the same time, somebody put these up. <laughs> when I saw these, I was jealous. Now, they're not pretty. Definitely one of my concerns in the posters I was making was I want these to have a life after they're hung. So like I want it to be something that's also beautiful in your house, like that would look like bookish. But this person killed me on the context front because uh, their big, reckless, kind of crazy screen print, like on a rip sheet of paper, it's not in the same area, was disruptive every time it was up. Like in this one, you can actually see, like there's my poster and there's that thing. What are you looking at? Like even if you don't want to look at that, you're looking at that. And I don't know the degree to which they were really thinking this through. They probably were like, let's just print it on a roll of, of newsprint because that'll be easy. But in context, it totally wins because of the way it dominates the space and how informal it is. You know, when I saw that, I was like, man, I wish I had been hanging up blank sheets of paper first to understand what I could have done in this space to really make something that could still be formally beautiful, but also work really hard, um, which is where that context thing comes from. Like, you know, if you have to do a, like as a graphic designer, it's so typical that you design a poster and you just sort of design it because it looks good or you like it or whatever, and then you see it out in the world and you sort of realize like, oh, everything is too small. Or that really doesn't work at a bus stop. Like literally no one, except for the five people that are weird enough to read the posters at a bus stop are paying attention to it. So like it loses on that context front. Um, but hopefully as you get more experience, you start to look at the context first and you start to figure out what do I want to happen in this space? And then you start to respond to it. But the other thing that is cool is sometimes that context just provides the answer. Like the, um, Looking at, the, looking at the store and knowing that the goal is to disrupt the space and take it over in a dramatic fashion, it's like the context did all the work there. No one had scrap. Scrap is like what we call reference images that we put in as we're thinking up things. No one had scrap of stuff hanging from the ceiling that was beautiful and cloth-like. We found that after we had the idea in order to sort of like start to do this process, of okay, what does that look like? Somebody goes on Pinterest and looks for art installations with stuff hanging. Like, that's the material we want. So all of a sudden, like the context dr drove the whole conversation. So to break that down a little bit, the first thing, identify the goal. So the way we did it is like, we loosely identified the goal. We're gonna do an art project in the building. In reality, we probably wanna be more specific so that's why I say maybe, because maybe you don't identify the goal. Maybe you just go like, I want to do something in a pond. And that's what you start with, and you let the pond kind of figure it out for you. Gather data about the space, the market, the usage. So for something that's like commercial, like graphic design, you want to understand the space. You really do need a goal. And then you want to understand, like, how do people use and interact in that space? So next time I do a poster series, I want to think really hard about that environment, about how people come through it, about how I can get out of it, but not have my stuff get torn off the walls because it's like out of bounds or whatever. And I just made a note about this, but also about the market. Um, I think if anyone has read, one of my favorite books is um, Growth Hacker Marketing by Ryan Holiday. Like, kind of influences everything I do. He talks a lot about no matter what you're doing, whether it's writing a book or starting a company or making a piece of art, trying to identify as much as you can about the context in order to make something that either fits in it perfectly, like effortlessly, or kind of destroys it. And he works with a lot of writers doing book marketing. 
they try to get in at the very beginning as the book is being started in order to start figuring out what are the concepts that this thing needs to work in uh, so that it's doing its job rather than finishing the thing and then trying to convince everyone to like it. Uh, one of my favorite stories is like um, Tim Ferriss, the guy that wrote the four hour work week, how he tested covers was by, via the context. He made fake book covers and he'd wrap them around things on, on the hardcover book table at like a Barnes and Noble and they'd sit in the Starbucks on a Sunday and just watch whether people picked it up or not. But he would just track like, that cover didn't even get picked up at all. Um, so he'd look at the context uh, and use that to try to make a decision about what to do in the end, which I think is super interesting. It's definitely more thought than I've ever given to virtually anything it kind of shows like you can take that idea and you can really stretch it out across things. Like you could use it for making an impactful art installation or determining what thing, like what movie to make next. You might have five movies that you want to write or you want to work on, but in the context of like next two years, this one already feels dated and old and maybe it's time to pick another one. And hopefully you have more than one idea. Yeah, this is like the danger of having one idea. It's like, it's not always the right moment for your one idea. So three, then list the ways you could achieve the goal. I think could is like the most critical word. I think should is the word you should not use. Like don't use should, use could. Like could is like non-committal, which I think in terms of coming up with ideas is great. Like a sort of constant with me in terms of like, talking about creative work or talking to a student that's like stuck on a project just to not say like okay what are your ideas but just gonna be like just make a list of everything you could do because all of a sudden everyone has ideas once that word is in there because like they're like well i could i don't know i could do any number of things and you're like yeah okay let's let's write those down let's figure them out and then sketch or test or do whatever from that list figure out a way to take from that list of coulds ways of investigating it and figuring it out. You know, like our art project, you know, it could be pencil sketches could be the way to figure it out. It could be talking to an architect. It could be massive Photoshop work. Like it could be a lot of different things, but like what are some ways that you could figure out how to bring it to life a little bit more? Not be super attached to it unless you want to be, but just start to investigate okay, this is what would happen now, what's the next thing that happens? You know, if I turn it into a rock climbing wall, does that actually get used? What are the potential problems that come from that? You start to kind of like drill down into it a little bit.